Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're banging out the election of 1812. James Madison, our boy from Virginia, wants to stay in the White House, but not everybody wants him to stay there. So let's take a look at the candidates. Let's take a look at the background issues. We'll take a look at the results, and we'll take a look at growing your brain. So giddy up for the learning, guys. Let's go get her done right now. So before we take a look at the actual candidates and the nominating conventions, we probably want to mention something that's going on in the background that's pretty darn important, and that would be the War of 1812. This is the first time we have a foreign war going on in the midst of a presidential election. We have a war president who's going to get reelected. And on June 12th of 1812, after the Democratic Republicans held their nominating convention, but before the Federalists, Congress declares war on Great Britain. This is the War of 1812. We have to remember going back to the election of 1808, the British and now the French are really kind of pushing up against our shores. They're taking merchant ships. The British are impressing soldiers. And not only that, but the British are also aiding Native Americans in their war quests with the United States, as well as maintaining forts in the Northwest Territory, which is kind of getting us a little upset. And at the same time, there are many Americans who believe in Manifest Destiny, that Spanish Florida, that British possessions like Canada should be part of the continental United States. So that's kind of lurking in the background as we talk about these nominating conventions. But before we declared war, the Democratic Republicans did have their convention, and they're going to have the split -arama. The party is going to divide itself really between Northerner and Southerner Democratic Republican. You have to remember that even though the Democratic Republican Party is really a party that's based in the South, that's the old anti-Fed idea, there's many Democratic Republicans in the North and they have different viewpoints. Many Northerners are against this war. The war hawks for the most part come from the Southern Hemisphere of the United States. So James Madison is a Southerner, but he's not really loved amongst all Northern Democrats. Democratic Republicans. So the first thought among some Democratic Republicans was to get his vice president, George Clinton, to run against him in the nominating convention. But poor old George died. But August, he has a nephew. His nephew, DeWitt Clinton, who later will become well known for really kind of starting the Erie Canal in New York State, he was the mayor of New York City. So after Congress met, and there's a congressional caucus of Democratic Republicans that cast their ballots in a sense, and only 86 of that 134 members of Congress actually show up to the caucus, the Northern Democratic Republicans aren't there. Um, they do nominate James. James Madison, he's going to be kind of the main Democratic Republican guy, but we also have another ticket. And it really comes out of the New York caucuses who throw their lot, their Democratic Republican lot, with DeWitt Clinton. So DeWitt Clinton decides that he's going to run as a Democratic Republican. Now the Federalists have their convention scheduled not long after, and they had a push for John Marshall. John Marshall, you know, Supreme Court, right? You know Marbury versus Madison, all that great stuff. He's very well respected, and not only would he do well as a Federalist in the North, but there was the thought that he could pull in um, his home state of Virginia and maybe even North Carolina. But the other problem was, was that DeWitt Clinton was from New York. He's probably going to win New York, and the Federalists were afraid that the election would be a brouhaha that wouldn't get settled until it got thrown into the House of Representatives. Remember, if nobody wins the Electoral College, it goes to the House of Representatives, and the House of Representatives is controlled by Democrats. Republicans. <laughs> My goodness. There was also a push for Rufus King, who actually ends up as a Federalist um, on the ballot in, in Virginia, but that's pretty much it. So the Federalists, for the most part, decide they're not going to support anybody. They're afraid if they throw their lot behind DeWitt Clinton, that will make Democratic Republican voters fearful to vote for him. But they also feel if they run another candidate, that DeWitt Clinton, who is more like a Federalist to them than a Democratic Republican, will not get the election. So they take a back seat. Now there is a Federalist, in a sense, on the ticket. The Pennsylvania Federalist had a caucus, and they nominate a Jack Jared Ingersoll, who is the Attorney General, to be part of the Clinton ticket. And in a nod to the Federalist Party, DeWitt Clinton takes on this Federalist from Pennsylvania on the ticket running against James Madison. James Madison decides that he's going to throw his lot with a Northerner for the Vice Presidency to have a balanced ticket. He goes for the Governor of Massachusetts, Elbridge Jerry, best known for the term gerrymandering. Go watch that video, kiddies. Learn all about gerrymandering. But this is a signer of the Declaration of Independence. 
independence, someone who's at the Constitutional Convention, and actually one of only three at the Constitutional Convention that voted against the Constitution because it didn't include enough individual rights for him the first time around. Later, gets well known for the XYZ affair, but this is a well-known politician. It's, it's kind of a relative safe bet for James Madison, and he feels as though this wouldn't be competition four years down the road for his boy James Monroe when he goes for the presidency in 1816, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have a Democratic Republican from the South and the Virginian James Madison, and we have these Northern Democratic Republicans that are tired. Why did I do a Southern accent? From the north in that that scenario but they're tired of the virginia dynasty remember three of the last four presidents come from virginia and they want their boy dewitt clinton to take the nod this time so let's take a look at the campaign and the results really quick and uh giddy up for that So at the end of the day, it's 128 electoral votes for James Madison, all of his supports coming from the South and from the West, very little support in the Northeast. The Federalist with DeWitt Clinton, he's not a Federalist, they're going to get 89 electoral votes, but this is the closest popular vote, even though all states didn't have a popular vote at that time in the history of American elections up to that point. It's 50.4% for James Madison to 47.6% for DeWitt Clinton. Now, we have to really stress that the the main issue in this election, of course, is the War of 1812. And while James Madison has a very clear position and his support in the South is only going to be strengthened by him being a war hawk going against England and France in a sense, but DeWitt Clinton is going to struggle because he's trying to play it from both sides. He's releasing positions in the South that claim that he's a war hawk and he's going to provide even better leadership to defeat Great Britain, while in the North he's playing the, well, well, I want peace kind of game to try to kind of appeal to those Federalists who want to be allies with Great Britain at the end of the day. So really what it came down to, guys, was Pennsylvania. Clinton is going to win his home state of New York, and the 25 electoral votes in Pennsylvania are going to end up going for James Madison. Even his attorney general, vice president, Jared Ingersoll, isn't going to help him win that state. So that is going to give the election, like we said, to Madison. And now we have four more years of James Madison. So guys, that's it. We hope you understand a little bit about the election of 1820. 12. DeWitt Clinton, you were so close, but don't worry. You're going to go on to be governor of New York, build the Erie Canal, and probably have a bigger effect on the United States and its history than you would have if you were president. All right, guys, make sure you check out the presidential election list down below. We have a whole bunch of elections for your brain to grow 10 times its size. And if you haven't subbed to Hip Use History, we have over 350, 60, 370 videos. I've lost track at this point, but you can click down below and go subscribe and uh, do a good deed for the day. All right, guys, we'll see you on the flip side where attention goes, energy flows. Next time you press my buttons, I'll be in front of you.